Speed. This is John Perry Barlow, take three. Mark. So you got married. Got married. And was quite happily so. And, you know, would periodically look over to the side. Uh, but, you know, was was not too restless, actually. And didn't become restless until uh, after my children were born, when suddenly, uh, as often happens, there was a complete transformation in, in the nature of, of our relationship, which had been incredibly hot and, you know, perhaps disproportionately based on sex to one where I think she would have rather played canasta than have sex. And she was, she was uh, just not into it. Uh, and I, you know, for reasons that I, I think are probably part of the biological system, you know, I think it's very difficult for a lactating woman to be interested in sex, and I think there's probably an evolutionary reason for this. But that put, we had three children in quick succession. It's kind of a marvel to me that we had the other two, given, given what the, what devastation the, the, the first one had enacted on our sex lives. And, and so a long period of time passed where things were not particularly functional in that department during which time I suddenly found myself out on the road a lot and increasingly seducible by people that I felt were irrelevant to my marriage, which was something that I wanted to stay in forever. I had every intention of being faithful to as far as maintaining its integrity. And somehow in the the way that people can worked out this elaborate self-rationalization where a little offshore drilling was not going to actually functionally threaten my marriage. Uh, and I suppose had everybody been down with the program, it might not have, but the problem was that I was not being honest about it. And it was the deceit that was really the issue. And so over a period of time, that deceit became incredibly corrosive. And I was still trying to impose monogamy on myself and becoming increasingly bad at it. Uh, and, and being increasingly deceitful about it. You know, and eventually, I mean, there were, there were a number of things that were tearing at the relationship by then. It wasn't simply this, but I think this was probably the most corrosive aspect. And we felt like we were both going to be better parents at some distance rather than trying to be at a close range where there are a lot of these dynamics that, that seem to be bringing out the worst in both of us. So we split up and not too long, like a year after we split up, um, I fell in love like they do in the novels, you know, where I was completely sideways, looked across a crowded room, knew I'd never felt like this before, um, and was suddenly, for about a year, completely, voluntarily, happily monogamous. I mean, I looked at other women and, and I could see their beauty, but it was like, it was like knowing that the mountains are beautiful at sunset without having the slightest desire to own the mountains or even climb them. And that was a state that was really interesting to me because I didn't even think that this was something that existed in me. Uh, I thought that, that the idea of being a fully, happily monogamous man was kind of something that didn't happen. But, unfortunately, uh, after a year in this state, uh, its object dropped dead, suddenly and surprisingly. And How old was she? Uh, she would have been uh, 30 in two days. Uh, and completely unexpected. And 
and uh, I had never put all my eggs in one emotional basket like that before, and I was completely devastated. And I thought as I came out of it, well, you know, I've experienced, I've experienced uh, imposed monogamy, and it didn't work. I've experienced voluntary monogamy, that works, but I don't know whether, I don't know whether it's a reliable thing to be looking for. Uh, and so I will simply announce myself to be, you know, a shameless ladies' man, and you know, take what comers can buy that poster and not be too offended by it. And you wrote an essay, right? Wrote an essay to that general effect. What was the essay called? Uh, a ladies' man and shameless. And proud, wasn't it? No, shameless. Oh, sorry. And there's and a difference. <laughs> And what was it? What, what was it? What was the gist of it? The gist of it was that you know I. I, I, I think you draw a distinction between uh, uh, Casanovas and. Uh, yes, I, I mean I I I I went into a, a bunch of things about being a ladies' man, but I mean, I, I felt that there were, there were essentially two kinds of ladies' men. There were the ladies' men, who basically were Don Juans and viewed women as as something to conquer. Uh, you know, and would keep score, and would, you know, and these were men that didn't actually like women very much. That they were trying to, they were trying to put them down by, by conquest. Uh, and then there were other men who were Casanovas, who really just was, were completely enchanted by the universe that each woman was unto herself, and were able to go forth and and genuinely feel that thing that every woman wants, which is to feel special in the eyes of the person who beholds her. And, you know, if you can, if you can believe that wholeheartedly of several different people, you can usually get away with a lot. Uh, but, even though you may have a clearly defined policy that you've published, that you've got a warning label. What I kept running into over the course of the time that I was pursuing this, this set of actions was that people would sign up and not believe in it themselves and would think that, and they would play bait and switch on themselves. They would, they would think that they were good for this, but actually in their heart of hearts they knew that they would change me and that, that I would then no longer pursue this course, and I would be monogamous. And then when that turned out not to be the case, they would feel betrayed and, and hurt. And, um, you know, and, I, and, and throughout I was looking for, I was looking for evidence in my own personal life for uh, the the proposed existence of all these non-monogamous women who could simply understand how I was being, you know, and could go along with it and, and meet me halfway on these issues. But I, you know, just didn't find any. Not that I wanted to get serious with. I mean, yeah, there, there, were, there were sort of uh, rogue girls out there just sort of having it off with strangers, and I could, you know, I had a... I got to be the stranger a few times, but in terms of actually being able to have a relationship with any with any substance that ran parallel to another relationship with any substance, I found that it was just extremely difficult to pull off over the course of time without hurting people or without feeling a kind of failure to have that thing at the core that has the, has the familiarity of intimacy. The, you know, the feeling that you have when you roll over at 4 o'clock in the morning and that is your person on the other side of the bed. You know, not somebody where you have to think, oh, who, who, oh, oh yeah, that's it. <laughs> it's a big difference. So, you know, it's, I, I, am working it through in terms of what seems possible with the world and various negotiations with it, you know, and, and I keep hoping that, it, you know, I, 
soon I will re be re reaching an age where all this becomes, you know, not a factor any longer because I'll just simply be too old to consider such matters. It hasn't happened yet, for better or worse. And, you know, the struggle to get it right continues. So you think there's just a fundamental contradiction between our desire for intimacy and and familiarity and domesticity no, I and our sexual No, see, I don't, I, I don't, I mean, I'm, I'm a big believer in having my cake and eating it too. And I, and, and I really don't, I really think that it's possible, you know, in my ideal world, here's how it looks. In my ideal world, there is sort of a base core relationship that has the, the homey realities, the familiarity and the, you know, the, the willingness to accept all aspects of one another's natures. And then there are occasional, you know, forays off to the side where you don't actually have to incorporate all the, the true details of the other party. You can, you can have a a short and merry time enjoying one another's joint fantasies and then just put that aside, you know, to have, go off and have an occasional adventure. That would be swell. Well, a lot of people seem to be exploring that today, that we've been talking about. I, su I suspect most of them somewhat unsuccessfully, unless, unless I mean, you're, you, may, you may be finding different different results out there, but my guess is that they are 